Hi, fellow seekers. Sally the Seeker here. I hope everyone's doing well. Well, we're going to continue. I think we are. Yes, there we are. We're going to continue down what we should just now call the Daryl Brooks Show. Thankfully, we can all rest easy knowing what the outcome was and laugh more about it. But it's still, I get very, very, very edgy and very, uh, just really agitated by his actions and his smugness, which he should really not think, be proud or smug or um, think he's smart about anything because he's not other than disrupting. But I'm kind of going, going back to the order we were in. There was the, um, the video. Of course, I did the, the two videos on him going back to the beginning when he, you know, was confident that he would be a good attorney. But of course, we all know since then he's complained, whined about everything they predicted that he would plus more. But it's still fun to just watch him slowly crumble, <laughs> honestly. And so this video, the next two videos are going to make it two parts. I actually made a complete video about, I don't know, it was either six to eight months ago on these next two fellows' testimonies because they were really very good. They were both an analyst of some type. And this fellow here is Chris Johnson. The one after him will be Trevor. I think it's Nylad. His name is, I think, even younger fellow than him. But I'm going to just focus on this testimony today. Um... Now, I added the complete testimony of both of them on my playlist. I'll also write it in the description. But the name of that video, it'll be the, like the last video. I think there's only three videos right there in the playlist. I'll be adding more to it. But the the name of it was, is, it says, um, Daryl Brooks throws a fit about things being unfair. Thinks he knows more than DNA analysts. So that's there in the playlist. You can see the complete testimony of both this fellow here, Chris, and then the other fellow, Trevor. But what I'm going to do is mostly just take Brooks' cross-examination of the two because, let's face it, that's when it gets more interesting, his idiotic questions. Now, there's a few things I'm going to take from, like, for example, on this way, Attorney Opper is questioning Chris here, but it's it's kind of along the same lines of Daryl throwing a fit because his sticker didn't get on a folder. I think some items got up there to the front without him allegedly knowing about it, and he was thinking they were trying to be sneaky. But as we all know, none of the attorneys are permitted to get up because they're trying to do it all, you know, like uniform, like Darrell. And since he's in shackles, he obviously can't go up and shouldn't go near anyone. But I'm adding that little part in where he throws a fit because that is pretty funny. And again, of course, it could be on the complete video, which is on the playlist. But I know sometimes people just like the little, the breakdown a little easier way. So let's go ahead and get going. Um, ask Madam Clerk if you could turn off the display, please, and I'm going to uh, present to the witness only another series of photographs, starting with 105. Let's go ahead. Do you know how many? Eight. Sequential? Uh, yes, 105 through 112. Thank you. Objection. Well, I haven't seen them yet, so I'll have to wait, but you can put them up and then I'll make a ruling. I think we're ready on our end. We're just waiting for Madam Clark. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> I'll leave it alone. You hit it. We just mixed each other twice. <coughs> Five. One oh five. Given what I see on the screen, the objection is overruled. Okay. And, Your Honor, for the sake of time, I'm just going to ask the witness to look through these photos just as if he had them in front of him, and then I'll um, ask some foundational questions. So, Okay. I actually just played that part just so y'all could see 
Brooks' body language, his eye rolling, him acting like he's being so put out and all of this. And it's just, you know, we see this all the way through. We see these same actions even during when the victims or the families of the victims make their impact statements. I just think it's, I just, oh, I just think it's disgusting. I do. I think it's, I just think it's sickening how he acts, but you know, just so we can, you can get an idea and you can hear him doing that eternal tapping of his little pin insert. Of course, it sounds a lot lighter than that, but he's just tapping, 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 tapping. That's something I noticed that he does when he's very agitated. Okay, so now we're going to get over to the next clip. I think this is where he throws a fit about something getting past him. Who knows? We shall see. Okay, let's let's check it out. It was a detachable hood from a jacket as well as a winter hat. And can you just point out on the touch screen which is which? Objection leading. Overrule. That's the hood portion, and that's the, the hat portion. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Did you find any U.S. mail or paperwork inside the vehicle? Objection. Relevancy. Overrule the witness may answer. Yes, I did. Were there any names associated with the U.S. mail or paperwork inside the vehicle? Objection, relevancy. <laughs> Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. What was that name? Daryl E. Brooks, Jr. Was there an address, if you can recall? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Hmm. The witness may answer. <laughs> there was, but I can't, I don't exactly recall it. Sure. Also on the table next to you, sir, is your report that I marked as exhibit number 90. Do you see that? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Wait for it. Placed on the table. <laughs> Go ahead, attorney offer. Well, objections. How did it get on the table? Oh, my God. Um, your objections noted. It's overruled. Um, <coughs> Um, there's a copy of a crime lab report. It has an exhibit sticker, number 90, with the case number of this case. Um, handing it back to the witness. Go ahead and make questions. How did it get it. on the table? Who put, placed it on the table? That's the Turning indicated she placed it there. Now remember, I know people say, oh, he only misbehaves when the jury isn't there. But look, there's so many instances, this being one of them that he misbehaves in front of the jury. I mean, they probably like a long time ago wrote him off in his shenanigans. Okay. We did that happen. Attorney Amber, go ahead and continue. Did you author this report, sir? Yes, I did. If you uh, review the report, would you be able to see the address for uh, Daryl Brooks that was noted in the paperwork from the inside of the SUV? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Please do. Overruled. Yes, I would. See how he's Please getting that, sir. more angry with his objections? Objection. Very... Overruled. Grounds for the overrule. Oh, gosh. See, he's going to get really pissy now. The witness may answer. Grounds for the overrule. Go ahead, sir. The address for the pieces of mail that I recovered was... 4014 North 19th Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53209. Thank you. Objection. That should be striking. We asked the question. He said he didn't recall. So how can you force somebody to recall? Gosh. Oh. The witness's recollection was refreshed through the use of his report. Which he indicated he documented the address. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. The answer will stand. Go ahead, next question, please. Yes, and actually, if I could back up one minute and ask Ms. Gussie to put back up 117. I have to ask a question about 117. Go ahead. And if we could display it, please, Madam Clerk. Wow. Nobody got a 
question. Mr. Yeah. Brooks, please refrain from interrupting. You'll have an opportunity to I, ask your questions on cross. I have an objection how, evident, how stuff got to the table without my knowledge. That, that should be known. That should at least be noted for the record. The so jury I should know. I wouldn't be able to do that. Oh my gosh. Well, your objection's noted. It's overruled. Go ahead, Attorney Offer. Mm -hmm. So that needs to stop happening. In addition these, these to the All right, I'm going to excuse the jury. She has given him so much leeway. Again, a lot more than I would have. I would have sent him to the back to the room right then, even before, because he was complaining in the more complete video prior to all this. She doesn't have to listen to all that. All right, for the jury. Can't keep doing stuff without. It should be a fair trial. That's my right. Oh. You shouldn't be able to do things without my knowledge. And pass it off to the jury like that's fair. They deserve to know that too. They don't really want to know. They don't. It's not about you. It's about the trial and the victims. I don't consent to being called that name. Are because this court indicated it would limit the movement of the parties due to your custodial status to keep things fair. And I you merely asked, how did it get there? Sir, do not I'm interrupt not me, or I'm you will forfeit your right to know how it got there. In this courtroom. So you hold me in contempt? Me. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm gonna make a record. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm not answering your questions. So then you're not holding me in contempt. Do not interrupt me again or you will go to the other courtroom. Under what lawful law? All right, he's interrupted me once again. Um, we're going to clear the courtroom. Yes. He's being disrespectful. I'll make a record once he moves. Unless you can promise me right now that you let me make my record without you interrupting me. Okay, see, right there. She should have let him go right then. I'm sorry. That's uh, No, I'm not apologizing. No, I am not sorry. I've said this multiple times. I think most of you feel this way too. I think in the end it turned out very well, but these times that she would give him all these chances, I don't do it with the kids at school. You tell them, I don't know, maybe you tell them once, give them a warning, and then there's it's not up for discussion anymore. You just go on and send them to timeout. Well, same with the kids, same with him. And it would have stopped all of this nonsense because that's all he wants to do is get on there and show out and have all the attention drawn to him, although it's... I don't know that he gets that it's not favorable. Maybe he doesn't care at this point, though, since he knows perhaps he's going off for a thousand plus years. But at any rate, she should have booted him out right then. But that's her, not me. Hey, sir. You gonna make your record? You can make your record. Then please don't interrupt me. Don't hold me in contempt. I've never said any such thing. Removing me for the courtroom, Your Honor, is essentially holding mm -hmm. me in contempt. Yep, you know a lot. No, don't you're you? forfeiting your right to be present under Illinois versus Allen. I didn't forfeit anything. I will, I'm going to start talking, and if he interrupts, then I will close this courtroom, and he will be taken to the next courtroom. Mr. Brooks, you are well aware that the court made some pretrial uh, rulings related to whether there would be. They can stay in. I haven't closed it yet. He's not interrupting me. Whether the parties could approach the witness stand and I did that because you're in custody and I'm not going to allow you to approach the witness stand while in custody um, that is why uh, various precautions have taken place uh, to limit frankly that from happening all because um, of him trial um, there was one instance at the very beginning of the case where I allowed the state to approach a witness I corrected that that hasn't happened since We've had bailiffs take items up to the witness stand, or the items have been given to the witnesses, or they've been placed on the witness stand. That's proper. There is nothing uh, wrong about that. Nobody's trying to pull a fast one over you. No one is doing something that's not permitted uh, by this court, or frankly, under the rules of decorum and courtesy or the presentation of evidence in this case. Frankly, from my perspective, sir, your attempts and your comments are to try to dig in at this jury and to somehow create doubt 
about the presentation of this case or the fairness of these proceedings uh, without the party, meaning the state, having an opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. I've taken the jury out at this point to admonish you that any further mumbling under your breath um, or not recognizing when I uphold or sustain an objection that I will take as a disrupting interruption meant to disrupt the proceedings. I'm not holding you in contempt. I'm well aware that that's one of my options. I choose not to do it for the reasons that I've stated on the record previously. All right, you can forfeit your right to be present at any point in time during this trial by your conduct under Illinois versus Allen. When it is disruptive, when it uh, does not follow the simple rules of courtesy and decorum, I draw your attention once again to SCR chapter 62, um, which has been previously provided to you, which is under the statute there. Um, these constant mumbling and interruptions for the during the proceedings. I haven't made a record of them today, but I will now. Started at 9.01, then there was five at 9.02, three at 9.03, four at 9.04, one at 9.05, sorry, two at 9.05, one at 9.06, uh, three at 9.08, again at 9.17, 9.27, 10.31, 1.05, there was talking over by you at 2.03, five interruptions at 2.14, 215, 217, at 219, um, audible muttering, 231, 233, what I would describe as inappropriate, like muttering under your breath, 235, at 306, there was a hilarious comment, at 311, there was what I would describe as arguing about the muttering and the irony of it all, at 312, there were four interruptions, at 337, um, more 409, 410, more mumbling at 411, twice, and at 412, um, nine very, uh, different times. So I think I've made an ample record of the disruptions today. I've been abundantly patient with you. Um, I've, again, as I stated earlier, I've even limited how I tell these things to the jury about how to disregard, and I simply say the jury is to disregard comments and statements made by the parties or the lawyers as those are not evidence. So I'm warning you, do not interrupt again when if this jury comes back or when they come back and you do that, uh, then uh, you will be removed and you will forfeit your right to be present for the examination of this witness. Let's bring the jury back in. Well, well you might as well remove me then because you, what you're doing is, is, is not fair. I can't even rebut oh, what you're saying. You I didn't can't interrupt rebut. you. I let you make your incorrect record. Mr. Brooks, I'm bringing the jury out and we're continuing. We're going to get through these witnesses. And, okay. and I'm not stopping you from doing that. Through your behavior, you're yeah, not going to delay these you, proceedings. I'm today. not trying we're to delay continue. the proceedings. So I wish you would stop being incorrect on the record and saying what I'm trying to do if you don't know that. You oh, we know do know I'm that. Mm -hmm. We know that. With you. Then, then so. don't. Because I'm not arguing with you either. I'm stating facts. You're raising your nah. voice. It's very because I'm, I'm, I'm tired of you always making a record. You're making a record of me trying to look bad. I know what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. I'm making a well, yeah, it does. Accurate. You do look you're bad. A record of and it did work. Statements. That's nah. what you're doing. Nah. You're not making a record of Mr. not Brooks, being I'm able. I'm advising you to be quiet because the jury's coming back you're up. You're advising me to be quiet? Is you telling I'm me to be quiet? I'm advising you to be respectful when the jury Are you comes telling up. me to be quiet or are you asking me? I'm asking you and advising okay. you. Okay, thank you for correcting that, because don't nobody tell me what to do. I don't mm. tell nobody else what to do. Oh, yeah? How's that working out for you, up under the jail or prison you're in right now? Do people tell you what to do there? Hmm. But they do. We're all, in, we're all the dogs in here. I've never told you this. Yeah, all except one. Anything at all. Sir, I'd appreciate if your tone of voice would change. I would appreciate if you would ask me. Yeah. I'm a grown man with grown kids. Don't mm. nobody, ain't nobody gonna talk to me like that. Yeah. Nobody. I don't have a problem with doing what you ask me to yeah. do. Not tell me. Just like when I ask you about subject matter jurisdiction that you have yet to prove on the record. She has. You ripped but it up. But somehow I'm being intentionally disruptive mm, you are oh man stop just stop it 
No, you need to stop it. Jury's coming out. All right for the jury. Not going to work. Uh, unfortunately for you, it did. Fortunately for us. I'm supposed to be scared of getting removed or something. Oops. Nobody said that. His eye rolling just makes me want to slap his eyeballs out of his head. How Mr. Bailiff could keep so calm. I'm telling you. He should write a book if he hasn't already. Now he's going to sit there and stare like a big old baby. Oversized suit. Ooh. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Statement continue its examination of this. I, hope he sit, I can't stand what he stands up either yes. and stays up. Rude. Madam Clerk, would you please turn the display back on? And I think I'm going to leave this on for the rest of his testimony um, and his questioning under Sue Opper because I believe that his, as I recall, his objections sound very, you can tell they're very, very angry, like, objection! Speculative. He always says it that way. He'll go, speculative. I can't believe after as long as I've watched it, I still get so triggered by this. Tiny little man. Okay, we'll continue. Mr. Johnson, were there other items on the front passenger seat besides the blue winter hat? Objection leading. Overruled. <laughs> Objection <laughs> leading. Do you recall a cell phone being present on that front passenger seat? Do you remember what kind of cell phone? An iPhone. I also see... Uh, some items that look like maybe headphones or a charging cable, something like that. Do you see that, Objection sir? Objection leading. Overruled. Foundational. <laughs> the witness may answer the exhibits previously. <laughs> Objection speculative. Overruled. I do see that. Ketchup. Do you remember something like that on the front passenger seat? Yes. Okay. And how about on the floorboard of the front passenger seat? Is there an item there, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. The answer. <laughs> yes. What do you remember that item was? A TV. Okay. And to the left of the TV, the white colored object? I don't recall what that is. Okay. But this is the exact way the passenger seat looked when you recovered the vehicle, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, if we could please go to Exhibit 116 and put up for the witness only. We must remember, although he's looking very threatening towards Judge Darrow, we have to laugh because I can remember, I think it's towards the end when um, Sue Opper makes either a closing statement or something at the very end saying that he thinks he's in control of the courtroom when in fact, as he sits there shackled to his table, he's in charge of nothing or no one. Just think about that and it'll... It will make us less annoyed and more amused. Sir, do you see Exhibit 116 in front of you? I do. Do you recognize this photograph? I do. Do you believe this to be a true and accurate depiction of the interior of the SUV? Yes. Move to Exhibit 116, permission to publish. Objection. Relevancy. Mm -hmm. Overruled. Exhibit one seven excuse me, exhibit one sixteen is received permission to publish is granted. What's in the uh, photo of one sixteen, please? This is an overview of the rear passenger seat. Uh, that rear passenger compartment contained several clothing items and miscellaneous items. Okay. And uh, was the um, Condition of the back seat like this when you found the vehicle, sir. Objection, speculative. Overruled. Mm -hmm. The witness may answer based upon his knowledge of recovering the vehicle from the scene and his training and experience. Yes. Now, for the witness only, I'm going to please ask uh, Miss Gussie to put up 113, 114, and 115 for his review. Go ahead. 113 up. Yes. Okay, do you recognize that item? 
I do. Okay. Next, 114. Do you recognize 114? Yes. And 115, do you recognize 115? There it is. I do. Okay. Do you believe these three uh, photographs truly and accurately depict uh, the vehicle, these areas of the vehicle, sir? Yes. I'll move to admit 113, 114, and 115. Permission to publish. <laughs> Exhibits 113, 114, and 115 are all received permission to publish granted. Please describe. That's an apparent fired bullet defect. I call this a striking defect. That's on the roof rail of the passenger side of the vehicle. Okay. Why do you call it a striking defect? It didn't penetrate any part of the vehicle. It was a more of a glancing kind of ricochet. Okay. And then, uh, and if you could zoom in on that uh, back left. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Please describe. This is a, a, an apparent fired bullet defect. I call this a perforating defect because it actually went through the exterior door skin and went all the way through into the inside of the vehicle. Did you ever find the uh, the fired round in the vehicle? Yes, I did recover a fired bullet and fired bullet fragment from the rear cargo area of the vehicle. Okay. Was there any evidence that that bullet traveled any further than the cargo area of the SUV? Objection, speculative. Based upon the witness's training and experience, he's making them up. The vehicle, he may answer. No, the bullet stayed in that rear cargo area. Okay. Now, aside from um, examining the interior and the exterior of the vehicle at ground level, did you attempt to look underneath the vehicle? Yes, the first processing strategy, if we go back to that, I wanted to get everything collected from all sides of the vehicle and inside of the vehicle before putting it on a vehicle lift to examine the undercarriage of the vehicle. So you did do that? Yes. What kinds of things are you looking for on the undercarriage? Looking for anything that shouldn't be normally present on the undercarriage of the vehicle. So I was looking for any hairs, fibers, any potential biological fluids such as blood. Did you find any such objects? Objection leading. Oh, no. <laughs> he may answer. Yes, I did. Did you collect those items? Yes, I did. You had described for us earlier um, swabbing of the steering wheel on the interior of the vehicle. Do you recall that? Objection. Leading. <laughs> um, overruled. The witness may answer. How do you go about swabbing a steering wheel, sir? Objection. What's the relevancy? Overruled. <laughs> the witness may answer. The best way to collect DNA on the so surface is to use a two swab technique. Well, the first swab is a swab that's slightly moistened with uh, deionized water and basically swabbing the surface and then following up that swab with a dry swab. So it's a two swab process, a wet swab followed by a dry swab and that becomes one item of evidence. Same thing for the gear shift? Yes. What do you do with these swabs after you collect them? I put them into the appropriate container um, and then seal that container, write my description of that particular item of evidence, and eventually that evidence is <clears throat> transferred to a unit at the crime laboratory for analysis. In this particular case, those items, anything for DNA, is going to be transferred to, to the DNA analysis unit. Did that happen? Yes, that did. And how about the uh, hat, States Exhibit 87, uh, did that get transferred to another unit for further analysis, to your knowledge? Yeah, so any clothing item that's Hold collected. He just objects. an objection. Oh, Lord. Grounds? Relevancy. Relevancy. Oh, my gosh. Such a big baby. Clothing items that are worn by individuals are a really good source of transfer of DNA. So, yes, I collected that hat, and it was transferred to the DNA analysis unit. Your report exhibits 90. Did you 
you believe that to be a, a true and accurate narration or summary, I should say, of your work in this case, sir? Yes, I do. Okay. Move to admit number 90, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. <laughs> Overruled. Exhibit 90 is received. I don't have any other questions then, Your Honor. Okay, here we go. All right. Thank you. Look at please. You said you do DNA uh, analysis, correct? No, I I did DNA analysis for hmm. incorrect. Nearly already ten years. I don't actually do DNA analysis anymore. So at the time of the incident, were you doing DNA analysis? No. Hmm. So who did the DNA analysis on all the items that were found during your investigation? DNA analyst Trevor nail it. Did you see the, the results of those DNA and did you see the results of those DNA tests? <laughs> Can't say the word. We did have conversations. Did you see him? No. He's so grumpy. I've noticed about him, and I've probably said this before. It's like these people, each of them have their own task. And when they're finished with it, they're finished. When they do the report, they're finished. But Brooks always wants to know, well, did you follow up on it? Did you talk about it? Blah, 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 blah. He just thinks everybody's all connected and everybody's in the know-all. But it's like each person has a, a specific task. And they move on, and then the next person does it. But he's always asking these same stupid questions. So it would be fair to say you don't know what those results were. I didn't verify it. Like I said, we just had conversations. So do you know the results of the DNA analysis? I really don't like his tone. In particular, is there a particular item? For any of the items. I don't recall the exact results, no. Barking up the wrong tree. reference to the uh, the gunshot that that you stated stayed in the rear cargo uh, where in the rear cargo did you find that shell casing objection that's a misstatement it wasn't a shell casing your honor shell casing fragment same thing hold on wow <laughs> such an ass I'll sustain the objection it mischaracterizes the testimony and ask that you rephrase it did you find a shell casing a bullet fragment I found a fired bullet fragment. Where did you find the fired bullet fragment? It was really close proximity to where the rear latch comes down and hooks in to stay closed. So on the floor of the rear cargo by where the actual cargo door comes down. And you said a latch that comes down? Yeah, so how Ugh. doors latch, like car doors latch, you know where the latch is? So where the rear cargo door came down and latched, it was in really close proximity on the horizontal surface of that rear cargo area. Did you observe uh, if, if the bullet fragment had struck anything? It struck some items in that rear cargo area. Do you recall what, what it struck? I don't. How does that really help him asking that sort of question? Nothing. He's just asking questions to ask him. Take up to t take up time, delay, and thinking he's going to give you have a gotcha moment on these people who are far more intelligent than him and educated. You made reference to a headband being on the uh, the rear view driver's side mirror, correct? Correct. It was on the driver's door mirror. And from your expertise, how would you, in your opinion, guess that it got there? Mm, gee, I wonder how. By coming into contact with something or someone that was wearing it? <laughs> but he and can't do you know that for sure? I forgot. No, but based off of my experience of 
a lot of years of examination of physical items of evidence. But it'd be fair to say that you don't know exactly. No, well, I wasn't at the parade. Know for I wasn't. sure. No. Not for exactly. We know. And you stated that you were present for the towing of the vehicle, correct? Yes. Do you recall at any time anyone uh, attempting to start the vehicle? No. And you stated that the bumper was, I guess, moved at some point so it wouldn't drag under the vehicle. I'm, I'm guessing that's what you said. If I'm wrong, you can. No, that's correct. Yeah, we so might be the only time you're right. bungee cords to secure it off the ground so that when we're moving it or putting it on the flatbed to go to, to the actual enclosed trailer, that it wouldn't be constantly going underneath the vehicle. When towing the vehicle, what was it placed on? Because of the amount of traffic or cars that were parked on the road, we couldn't, the towing company couldn't get the enclosed trailer right to the end of the driveway. So the vehicle was put onto a flatbed truck and then driven a few houses down where then it was transferred to an enclosed trailer and then removed from the scene. So with the bumper, being that it was first placed on a flatbed truck, as you say, <clears throat> had, what, what, what problem would the bumper had caused if it wasn't going to be physically dragged or, or anything at that point? Oh, gosh. I, I'm not sure I understand your question. Yeah, what, really. What kind of problem would the bumper pose if the vehicle was... On a, on a flatbed truck. The whole point essentially, is... Essentially, what I'm saying is to give you more clarity. Please. How could the bumper be dragged at that point? It was being removed from the surface of the driveway onto the flatbed. So if the bumper weren't secured in an upright position, it would be pulled and the bumper, as the vehicle is going this way, the bumper would be pulled underneath the vehicle. So once it was secured on the flatbed truck, would the bumper still pose any problem? The, the vehicle on the flatbed, the bumper was in a secure position. Mm. If it wasn't bungee corded, would it bungee have posed corded. a problem? Yes. How so? So dumb. How so? If it went bungee corded, it'd probably flop off. It wasn't moving. It's going to move eventually. The whole purpose was to secure the bumper in place to preserve any Stupid physical questions. evidence that might have been on the bumper. And you, do you recall who did the actual towing? The company is complete towing and recovery. And you stated to want to get the vehicle to a <laughs> envir environmentally friendly, secure location? Yeah, a better term would be environmentally controlled. Uh, what, what do you mean by environmentally controlled? God, these are stupid questions. Proper lighting, <clears throat> uh, outside of the elements, outside of view of the public, so an enclosed building. Why the reference to outside <sighs> of the public? <sighs> It's easier to do examinations in a controlled environment. Would it be fair to say at that time, before it was towed, the, the, the vehicle had been uh, secured, uh, checked. Uh. That was done. That was done out in public. So, what would be the difference at that point? Look at his face. I'm gonna like, go back to my. <clears throat> original statement of what my primary duty is. My primary duty is to preserve the integrity of the evidence. So that night, I was concerned with doing the necessary steps that I deemed relevant to collect and then get that vehicle to a more suitable environment just based off of 
how much more work and analysis and processing that vehicle would entail. Fundamentally, I follow. Um, oh my gosh! I follow I'm going to be questioning him. Fundamentally, fundamentally. The question, though, is. Mm. By the time you arrived to the scene where the vehicle was located, were you aware that the vehicle had essentially been already investigated? No. So you had no knowledge that the vehicle had been secured, had been um, pretty much investigated by that point? Well, I was aware that the vehicle was in a secured state. I don't know what happened prior to that. It was very little information that I received on the initial phone call because of the hectic nature of everything. So I had an address and I knew that the vehicle was being secured by law enforcement. So law enforcement were present when you arrived to the scene? Yes. And at that time you had learned, no, uh, did you learn any knowledge from the law enforcement other than what you were told during the phone call? No. Do you recall who you were called by? I was called by Special Agent in Charge Dave Calbundi of the Division of Criminal Investigations. <laughs> Do you recall what time you arrived at the scene? I arrived at approximately 8.15 p.m. Do you recall what time the vehicle was found? I don't recall. Do you recall anyone telling you or mention, mentioning what time the vehicle had been found? I don't recall. So it would be fair to say before you arrived on the scene, you have no knowledge of what's been happening around the vehicle? That's correct. Say you, you made reference to a hat being found in the background. Do you, do you remember saying that? Or in the backyard, rather. I'm sorry. Not the background. The backyard, I meant to say. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at the time that you observed this hat in the backyard, do you, <clears throat> from your expert opinion, do you recall it? having any relevance to the vehicle? No, it was um, an item of evidence or an I a potential item of evidence that just seemed out of place. So in that, those types of situations, I always collect those types of items. But you weren't sure at the time <laughs> if it had any involvement with the actual vehicle? No. Was there anything significant that stood out about the hat? Just the location. Did you find any blood on the hat? Did you find, or was it just pretty much just a hat in the backyard? I didn't do a thorough, thorough examination of the hat. So as far as you, you were concerned, you, you, you was basically just taking in the evidence as a precautionary thing? Or? Yeah, it was an item that just seemed out of place, so I collected that hat. Did you at any time obtain knowledge about the relevancy of that? No. that you were shown. Had you seen those photographs before today? Yes. Do you recall if they were taken the same night of your investigation or multiple nights or days, rather? There were multiple days. And do you recall why you had to... Or do you recall why those photos had to be taken over a multiple-day span? Yes, the vehicle 
needed a comprehensive evaluation or processing examination of pretty much every single side and surface of that vehicle. And to do that, uh, photograph-wise, would have took days? Yes. So when did you start, uh, when did you start actually uh, doing the investigation of the items inside of the vehicle? That would have been the 22nd, November 22nd. So the next, <clears throat> the next day, correct? Mm -hmm. Smart. And so did you yourself do uh, analysts of the outside of the vehicle? Yes. Same day, 22nd of November? Yes. So you kind of started the outside and the inside pretty much roughly at the same time? Yes. <coughs> Do you recall how long your, your complete investigation took? Mine along with my colleagues? Yours. Mine. The examination itself of just me examining the vehicle? Just you. Probably over 40 hours. And that does not include wow. the report that I'm writing. It doesn't include the process of going through the report, everything. But my examination, at least 40. And so I'm assuming you did the report after you completed the initial investigation. Part. Yes, the report's a summary of my processing. And define summary. What do you mean by summary? It pulls everything together. It details my examinations and any findings I have from those examinations. I always view summary as oh, not boy. every detail, but pretty much like uh, it's, it's, it's much as would be relevant, but not every single detail. Would that be fair to say? This report is comprehensive in the terms of it lists every single item that was collected. So why would you refer to it as a summary? It's a summary of the examination and processing. That's the best way to describe it. It's not a dictation. In other words, what do you mean by dictation? There yeah, there we go. That uh. agencies may do that are dictated, right? They're this, I did this, then I did this, then I did this. This is a summary. This isn't a dictated report. So what exactly did you summarize in your report? my examination and processing strategies that I used and the items of evidence collected and any relevant findings associated with those <laughs> examinations. Did you do any examination of the cell phone? No, I collected those and transferred those to a detective with the Waukesha Police Department. Do you recall who that detective was? David, his last name is spelt, I believe, F O Y E N, Foyen. So, at the time that you turned the phone phones over, did you do any do any more work in regards to the phones? No. Oh, no, I don't do that. Oh, yeah. I think he's got the wrong page. Poor, poor Brooks. Brooks. Obtaining a search warrant to conduct an inspection on the uh, ACM? I'm sorry, no. I didn't understand. An inspection of what? Uh, the, the ACM. I guess that would be the air control module, I'm guessing that's what that's 
Thank you. Rick, Rick, you No, since I don't do that type of analysis or examination, I didn't obtain any search warrant with that. Any reason why I would say that in the paperwork? Objection vague. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. <clears throat> as to what paper your paperwork you're referring to. Uh I'm guessing. Yeah. At best. I don't know what the what it will be called, but it says conclusion inspection summary. Hmm. He's got the wrong report. <laughs> Look at his face. He's like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Is it conclusion inspection, inspection or conclusion slash inspection summary? He's got the wrong paperwork. Is it from this witness? Huh? Is it from this witness? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Look again. Go ahead. I don't think that is from this witness, John. I don't see anything like that in this Exhibit 90. Are you perhaps still looking at Inspector Schultz's report from the State Patrol, the last witness? Uh, what page number do you have? And I'll take a look at it and I'll compare. This says uh, page five. Yeah, he's looking at uh, the last exhibit from Inspector Schultz, page what three. It says. Yeah, whatever. Christopher Johnson. It's not him. Oh, it does say that in 83. Yeah, it says, if I can read for completeness, or you can, it says, upon arrival, I met with crime scene chief Christopher Johnson from the Wisconsin State Crime No, 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 no. That's not what I'm reading from. Okay. Chief Johnson had obtained a search warrant to conduct the mechanical inspection and to image the data retained within the escape's airbag control module ACM. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. So that was written by Inspector Schultz, who just testified, not this witness. To clarify oh. the record. Here. <clears throat> Thank you. I apologize for that. It's all in the same paperwork with uh, Chief Johnson, so I, maybe that's where the confusion comes in. Yeah, the confusion is you don't keep your crap straight. You don't review it. You're always losing things. You don't... You accept the value and return for value, blah, 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 blah. You keep your crap straight. You just like to talk off the top of your head, which is a grave mistake. But nonetheless, here we go. The record would reflect this witness's last name is Johnson, so I think that's understandable. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know. I was yeah, just, just reading shut up and move on. Move on, Fair move on. Enough. Do you recall at any time obtaining any type of search warrants pertaining to the vehicle in this incident? Yes, I have obtained a copy of the search warrant. And do you remember what that uh, search warrant was was for? What, what was the intended search? Uh, to search the vehicle and process it for any biological fluids, hairs, fibers, any electronic equipment, any personally identifying information. And uh, the, the, the ACM would, would fall under the lines of uh, the mechanical side of? Yes. Come on, what you got next? We're waiting. Tick tock. She shuffled through. Hey, 
at any time during your inspection, did you observe anyone try to start the, the vehicle? When I was with Investigator Schultz, when he came to my laboratory, he attempted to start it. Tick tock, tick tock. Come on, move on, Daryl. I don't have all day here. But he's so happy he can have it. The power of delaying all of this. Get your paper straight. Oh my gosh. And after uh, you, you already stated that your initial part of your investigation before before the report uh, totaled 40 hours. And at that time, after you had completed your report, did you do any more investigating in regards to the vehicle? After my report was complete? Yeah, after, after you had done uh, the 40 hours. I can already tell you right now. Once the report is completed, why would you do more work? Is another dumb question. Hours uh, that you stated with, and then the actual report. No, once my report's done, I didn't do any further examination of the vehicle. And after that was completed, had you uh, received any follow-up from law enforcement at, after you had completed everything? No. Had you yourself uh, followed up with law enforcement ab about the investigation after you completed your initial part? No. I think he's can't find anything else. You yourself didn't file any claims in this matter, did you? Well, we're wrapping it up, no. I think. Do you know of anyone who filed any claims in this matter? I don't. subpoenaed by to testify? I was subpoenaed by District Attorney Sue Opper. Do you recall when that was? I believe it was sometime. I don't exactly recall when. And did you did you follow up on that subpoena? No. After you had received it? Come on, just get on to who's the plaintiff and move on. Come on, let's keep let's bring bring it on. You know that's what's next, Mr. Predictable. Have you at any time seen or read any complaints in in regards to this incident? No. <clears throat> Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? 
the state of Wisconsin. <laughs> Would you label that as a person, an actual human? Yeah, Grounds. God. Sustained. Here we go. You ever actually seen the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. If you saw the plaintiff, would you be able to identify the plaintiff? Objection. Relevant. Sustained. Pursuant to number six eleven, sir. Please move on to a different line of questioning. Just trying to establish who the plaintiff is, Your Honor. Mm, yeah. yeah, we know, we know. Do you see the plaintiff present in court today? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. Would you consider yourself to be an injured party in this matter? No. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Uh, just very briefly. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you said when you arrived on Maple Street there were police officers present? That's correct. And you said the vehicle was secure at that point? Correct. Objection. What do you mean? Leading. <laughs> <laughs> um, the answer may stand. Next question. Shut up. Oh, what do you mean by that, sir? The perimeter was secured with crime scene tape, and there were officers that were standing at the location where the vehicle was. Was it? Would it have been possible for a member of the public or any curious person to just walk up and touch the vehicle or do anything to the vehicle? Objection. Speculative. Uh, based on his training experience, he may answer. Overall. They would have been stopped by law enforcement. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Look at him. Stepping down, my dear. Can anyone else? Yes, that's thunder. And then uh, the exhibits that Mr. Johnson has, Your Honor, what would you like done with those? Uh, I'll take them. All right. Quick, click in your insert. Uh, I have 90 and 87. Yes. Just watch. Look in. What was 87? 87 is a hat. I'm not sure yeah. if I did move that, but I would move that into evidence. So we will need that item for the next witness. Look at him. He thinks okay. he's missed out something back. else. Thank you. Um, Objection to that. that um, no, that before is. you should, before you showed me that, I didn't even see what that was. If you would have never told, to I know, but if you never would have told me, I never would have even know what that was because I didn't see it till you just moved it. Poor baby. Um, I just had it up on the stand, but here it is. It's exhibit marked as exhibit eighty-seven. Go ahead and said state has moved it into evidence. I believe there's an objection. It's yes, noted. there is an objection. Um, yep. Overruled based upon the testimony of the prior witness. It is received. And who do we have coming up to the stand? Your Honor, the state next calls Trevor Nayled. Uh -huh. So now I'm going to show you. See, he had his panties so much in a wad. He totally missed Attorney Opper talking about that evidence marked number 87, the winter hat. But it's there, but he missed it because he was too busy staring up at the ceiling looking at post-it notes, or looking for scriptures that might fall down on him. So let me back up, as he would say, and show you what I'm talking about. Play to the witness only, Exhibit 117. Do you recognize what's shown in Exhibit 117, sir? Yes, there's a hat that's on the front passenger seat cushion. Is that the way the object looked when you found it? Yes. Uh, move to admit 117 permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Exhibit 117 is received. Permission to publish granted.
could you please, uh, it's a touch screen in front of you, circle the hat that you just described for the jury. And then uh, to your left, sir, on the witness stand, before you uh, took the stand, I placed an item up there that's been marked as exhibit number 87. You see that on the table there? Yes. Can you identify exhibit 87? <laughs> yes, this is the winter style hat that I collected from that front passenger seat. Okay. Like to, uh... So there you go. I can't believe he missed that one and now he's going to whine about it. But this happened just before the other one that had been placed up there. But see, he wasn't as sharp as he thought he was. Although, it's not really that important. But it is to just show him and his stupidity. But, there we have it. That is a shortened version but yet enjoyable nonetheless of his foolishness and his stupidity and the overall angst he causes us all. But we can take, we can lift our heads up and know that he's where he's supposed to be. And But unfortunately, things, other than the fact that they have justice, that he's in prison, the victims and their families, you know, we'll have to live with this for the rest of their lives. But anyhow, so there that is. This is a wrap for now. Hope you all enjoyed. Like I said, there is a longer version over there on the playlist. It covers both of the gentlemen. Um, I will do a shortened version of Trevor's testimony. And that's really funny because Brooks really acts like he knows everything about DNA. And uh, repeatedly he'll say, well, isn't it this? Well, no. Well, isn't this right? No. He just, he looks like an idiot, but isn't that how we derive our pleasure? <laughs> so, hope y'all are doing well. Thank you all, as always, so much for liking, commenting, subscribing. I love you all so much and appreciate you. Don't forget to be kind to others, be kind to you, and I'll see you the next time.